that Jesus was so disfigured, he was so tortured by that process that led up to him being hung on a cross that he wasn't recognizable as a man. A, moral, A, B, because they're lying. C, the children. They're going after the children. How dare we say nothing? And D, because of the dishonor to God. Greetings, everybody. What do you say to an atheist who thinks that she knows Jesus when in fact she doesn't and at the same time is accusing you of being hateful and bigoted and even staggeringly, even repulsive to Jesus himself? What do you say to somebody like that? What do you say to a Muslim who claims that they are honoring Jesus more than you are as a disciple of Jesus? What what do you say to these people? What I want to do today in this video is to give you an ABCD for the LGBT. And I want these to be simple, memorable, easy to memorize points that will help not just with Muslims and atheists, but with any 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 narrative that is opposed to the very clear message of Jesus Christ. An A B C D for the LGBT. LGBT meaning of course anybody that disagrees with what is clearly revealed in the scripture. So I hope this is helpful. Let me tee it up firstly by saying one of the reasons that I want to do this is because of encounters that I have. I had two encounters recently. One was with a Muslim on the streets of London a few months ago during some street evangelism. And the Muslim said to me, and I've never heard this directed toward me before. He just said to me, you know, quite aggressively, you know, I'm honoring Jesus more than you are. Franks. That was the claim from the Muslim. And the reason for that is to do with what Paul said when he got off the boat in Corinth. Do you remember what Paul said? For I resolved to know nothing except Jesus Christ and him crucified. The reason that this guy, I can't remember his name, and Muslims in general view the, their belief about Jesus honoring him more than Christians is because of the crucifixion. Listen to this. One Sunni Muslim says, Muslims believe that Allah saved the Messiah from the ignominy of crucifixion, such as Allah saved the seal of the prophets following Hijra. Now, Hijra refers to the flight of um, Muhammad from Mecca in AD 622. It comes through the medieval Latin from Arabic, literally meaning flight. Okay, so the portion of the Quran that provides the basis for this denial of the crucifixion. That's why this guy accused me of being dishonoring of Jesus and that he was somehow honoring Jesus. It's to do with the, it's to do with the cross. And I'm convinced this is why the Apostle Paul, in all of his intellectual capacity and all of, everything else that Paul could have made, he reduced it to Jesus Christ crucified. This is the knife. This is the scalpel that cuts through the noise and the nonsense. It cuts through the flesh in some case. It won't for everybody's flesh, but it will for some. When you hold up the historicity of the crucified Jewish rabbi, the Messiah, the Lamb of God who takes away, when you, when you do that, will cut for some people. And this is why I think that Satan peddles this narrative to challenge the crucifixion. Another Muslim adds, we honor him, Jesus, more than you do. This is a quote, do we not honor him more than you do when we refuse to believe that God would permit him to suffer death on the cross? Listen to this. This is why Luther said to Erasmus, your thoughts of God are too human. This is the Muslim thinking and this is the, um, this is what this a, B, C, D for the LGBT, I'm hoping will help people to be more willing to engage with. This is what they're saying. Do not we honor him more than you do when we refuse to believe that God would permit him to suffer death on the cross? Rather, we believe that God took him to heaven. 
So they don't disagree that Jesus was, that there was no cross, or most rational Muslims won't, that there wasn't a cross, or that Jesus wasn't on the cross maybe, but that he didn't die. He didn't go, God wouldn't possibly allow his son, I don't believe it's his son of course, but they wouldn't possibly allow the prophet, Jesus, to go through the ignominy of death, and therefore they honour him more by believing that lie of Satan that flies directly in the face of historical credibility, by the way. And similar things are being said by Muslim clerics in the early years of this century. Thus, one said in a church gathering soon after 9-11, we believe in Jesus more than you do, in fact. We believe in Jesus more than you do, in fact. Which leads me to the atheist this week. Look at these quotes from somebody called Maria who on the Glorious Few video wanted to say this, Christ preached for all mankind. He lived with love for Palestinians, not hatred like Nicholas. Heard of the Good Samaritan? Jesus Christ would have been repulsed by the vitriol in the words of Nicholas Paul Franks and would have rejected them and him. I'm assuming you'll agree that the beginning of a conversation or exchange on YouTube, particularly or on online formats, is the very first comment often sets the tone, reveals the motive, reveals the heart, in fact. And it's obvious that this person isn't wanting to have a conversation. They're wanting me to, to know that I'm hateful and I'm um, all the other things. But it's, it's concealed with some questions that I have actually answered even though the, question, the, the comments that continue to come back to me insist that I'm some kind of cowardly politician because I'm a little man because I run away. I have answered the questions, you just don't like the answer, and that's different. Um, but look at, look, at what the, um, look at what she's saying. So she's saying that because I shouldn't have any issue with a man and a man loving each other in in a homosexual relationship or a woman and a woman or presumably, and it is a pres presumption, but I think it's a logical one, if there was more than two people involved in a consenting relationship, what business is that of mine? What could that possibly... And I want you to understand, this is what I think it's really important to understand. Although some people come in a more unreasonable way, like Maria, there is a genuine sense in which people are incredulous. There is a sense in which people are genuinely what on earth has that got to do with you, Christian? And I think this is this is why I hope that the this ABCD for the LGBT will be helpful because the contexts in which it will be needed, and not everybody will need it. I'm, I hope this isn't patronising anyway, but I just hope it's helpful for for I think the the vast majority of Christians who are intimidated by these things because people are losing their jobs. We're going to say more about that in the next few months when we can. But it's to, it's to have this in mind so that in whatever context there is the need to defend the gospel and indeed to defend Jesus to, um, you know, I'll give you an example, right? Just this, just this week in a spinning class that I was at, I go to a cycling gym class. The instructor as a lady um, told me at the beginning that the playlist or the sets, the music and playlist for the next session is going to be to celebrate pride. And I did think, I didn't, I didn't in the end because I was tired and it's been a difficult few weeks. But I did think about going up to her and letting her know why I won't be coming to the next class. And so it, it could be that there's a need for 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 this A B C D for the L G B in that kind of context where you you literally are now there may not be a, there there may be no aggression back but you have to be discerning. And my discernment was that this this instructor knew full well, and I know for a fact that she listens has listened to our podcast, so she'll know she'll know. And I actually think that that's part of the reason that she's doing it. I think she's doing it deliberately because she knows what I believe. Um, so it could be a situation. It could be a situation on the streets with a Muslim, or it could be if you're involved in a um, a pro-life campaign on the streets regarding abortion, 
And again, there's this genuine sense in which people are livid and they genuinely don't understand why you would be either opposing homosexuality, LGBT or abortion, you know, pro-choice thing. Now, I deal with this and I'm plugging this again because I've given a whole chapter to to these issues. Um, let me just tell you, it's chapter eight, industrial Christian idolatry, the bioethical standards of Christian radicalization. And I hadn't planned to do this, but let me just give you the first couple of paragraphs. Satan adores abortion, homosexuality, and transgenderism. Satan adores these bioethical positions. Just as it was impossible to restrain legion, even with chains, nothing other than demonic power can explain the disproportionate strength and influence of the LGBT quote-unquote community to intimidate and silence the free speech of the vast majority of the population. In virtually no time at all, through the redefinition of the family unit, marriage and what it means to be a little boy and a little girl, the West has witnessed a blitzkrieg of the devil's ravaging power that transcends the natural limits of human ingenuity and strength. This is, so maybe you want to get this book for that. I've written a whole chapter about that. Um, without further ado, let me give you the um, this ABCD. This is what I think we should all be prepared, memorized, be willing to engage not in a combative way, and this is an important thing to say as well. This isn't to attack back. This isn't, in some cases, like I was reminded by a session that my dad did recently on Meshach, um, Daniel in, in the uh, Nebuchadnezzar's furnace and so on. There may be occasions where it's inappropriate to defend ourselves. So it's it's not always that you have to give an answer. Um, or the, But, but I, off, I don't want that to be a cop-out either because I think we're called to expose the, the deeds of darkness and that's going to require being able to give an answer. And, and it's to say this as well, it's these, this ABCD is not a combative thing. It's, it's an olive branch. The ultimate hope, ultimate hope of it is that as you respond to these people in whatever context, and it could be someone who's wanting to punch you in the face, it's, it, it spit at you or call you or whatever it is, in whatever context is, there's a hope that as you give this ABCD, that people will come to salvation. That's the hope, is that people will be saved. And when I said to this lady, Maria, the other day, when she's attacking me, I pleaded with her. I asked her twice, please read the last few paragraphs of, of John chapter 15. And I'll come to that in a minute. But anyway, here are these. This is the ABCD that I think we should all memorize for the LGBT. Firstly, we live in an amoral world. We live in a world that asks questions like has been asked. What's it got to do with me if X, Y, and Z, two men love each other and want to have sex or two women or more than two people? What's it got to do with me? That's coming from an amoral, uh, amoral worldview. There's no moral compass. Melvin Tinker was right. The West has been lost. The West isn't in trouble. It's been lost. We live in a world where, where morality isn't a thing. We don't have a moral compass. And that's where that question comes from. It's important to know that and understand that and be able to, to say to somebody in, in response, are you, are you honestly saying to me that just because it doesn't affect me in the way that you're... And of course, that's not true... But even if it didn't affect me directly, are you saying, therefore, that I can't have any sense of right or wrong about that? We live in an amoral world, and that's what it is. Our world is stripped from any sense of right or wrong or even inappropriate. <laughs> Most of the time, people don't even aren't even willing to say that's in inappropriate because we live in, a, in an amoral world, let alone something is right or wrong. So that's the first A, A. We live in an amoral world and you should be able to say that back to somebody quite happily who asks that kind of ridiculous question. Secondly, B, because they're lying. The agenda of the LGBT posse and the crew that form the backbone of this kind of blitzkrieg through Western civilization is not just to have inclusion and love. That's their flag that they wave. 
at the heart of this is to dismantle Judeo, Judeo-Christian values. They're lying to you when they say that they just want to be included in love. They don't. There is at the heart of this, and they won't understand this, but it's a demonic spiritual reality to dismantle the things that God says about his creation and ultimately to dismantle, to attempt to dismantle the things that God says about himself. Contextually, it's important to remember that not always, not everybody will always understand that. There is a sense in which people are genuinely incredulous. What has it got to do with you? Sometimes that can be a something to engage with. And other times, like with this lady, Maria, it's completely irrational. And you have to be, I think, prepared to, to walk away when there's an irrational, aggressive. So, so not everybody will understand that, that at the heart of this, A, that it's spiritual, but that B, there is a, a, a deception the lie that they just want inclusion and loved and equal rights is a lie. There is a, a more nefarious scheme here to dismantle the Judeo-Christian family unit, to destroy marriage, which would be between a man and a woman, one man and one woman for life, gender that God has created in his image, male and female, he made them, and so on and so forth. It's a lie. It's not just in, it's to dismantle those truths. So we live in an amoral world, and that's where the question comes from. Because they're lying, and they are, and it's important that you give details about these things, which relates to the C, because of the children, and evidence of the fact that they're lying. And this is what I would say to a fitness instructor who wants to put a pride playlist together, or somebody like Maria this week. What would you say if your 11-year-old daughter went to a school that hosted the mermaids, who behind your back as their parent gave them a device to bind their breasts and stop the natural development of their breasts. What would you say to that? Would you say, what's it got to do with me? I'm their parent. It's between the mermaids and my child. And then you found out, oh, the mermaids have deliberately concealed that from me as their parent. Would you honestly still then say, well, it hasn't got anything to do with me? <laughs> we live in an amoral world because they're lying to you about their motives and agendas and long-term goal and because they're going after the children. David Robertson, a.k.a. The We Flee, and I, back in, I think, 2014, did a video about transgenderism. And in that video, he claimed this is tantamount to state-sponsored child abuse. And it is. When children are given breast-binding devices by their schools, in effect, it is, it is child abuse. When you tell a child that gender is fluid, it's child abuse. When you tell a child that marriage, a family unit, can be between two women and a child that comes from another mother, maybe, or two men and a surrogate child, or multiple, it is child abuse. And the spiritual goal, the spiritual scheme, for those of, of you listening to me who are Christians who will understand this, it is to, to do that in such a way to the most vulnerable in society. Of course, that would include the elderly, but in terms of the most formative and the most influential and the most vulnerable, it is the youngest, it is the ch and in the education system. Because they're lying, a amoral, because they're lying. People are losing their jobs about this. We can't say more about it at the minute, but we will do in the next short period. We will say more about this. They're going after the children and the education system is the seedbed of the demonic, where this state-sponsored child abuse has been and is and will be happening. A, moral, A, B, because they're lying. C, the children. They're going after the children. How dare we say nothing? And D, because of the dishonor to God. What has it got to do with me? See, when... Jesus, and you may not understand this, so let me tell you. When Jesus was killed by the Romans at the behest of the Jewish religious leaders, it says in the book of Isaiah, okay, prophetically, messianically, in advance of that happening, that Jesus was so disfigured, he was so tortured by that process that led up to him being hung on a cross, that he wasn't recognizable as a man. He was so tortured, he was so disfigured, he was so marred or marked or cut or 
that same reproach that fell on him, if you read the last passages in John chapter 15, it makes this so explicitly clear. And again, I'm, a, I'm appealing to people who want to attack me and other Christians or people who are serious about following Jesus at, at least. Please read that and you'll understand that Jesus, far from your ridiculous claim that Jesus would somehow disagree or reject me for what I'm, I'm saying exactly what he said. And for the Christians listening to me, this is the point. The reproach that fell upon Jesus at Calvary is the reproach and persecution that is supposed to fall upon us as we ambassadorially, in that sense, speak for him. The same reproach. It says that in John 15, 21, that the, for his name's sake, there is a persecution that comes. And the reality is for the church, we're not worthy of being persecuted at the minute. And this is why this is crucial, this A, B, C, D for the LGBT. It's important for preparation, guys. If you're not able to stand before a fitness instructor who wants to fill the room for an hour with, with pride messaging and so on and so forth, and you're not able to say why that's not right or why somebody approaches you on YouTube and you have, you know, A, B, C, D, these things are, are, are because of the reproach. Ultimately, it's the dishonor of God and... You, you can say on a rational level that you don't believe in God. That's just ridiculous. God doesn't exist. He's a, he's a sky fairy. But what you can't do is what, what... And of course, they're still profoundly and eternally and frighteningly wrong. If you honestly think by looking at the sun in the sky and the moon that God doesn't exist, then that's your business. But it's greater faith than I've got. But if you're claiming to, to speak for Jesus, you're claiming to know and understand what he said from the Bible, no less and reject the things that Jesus himself said it is at least ignorance in extreme but it borders on the on the insanity it, it borders on the delusional and that's why ultimately we want an ABCD for the LGBT as a olive branch for people to come to faith we want people to understand and see and hear what they're saying as lunacy and it is the amoral world of the a is is lunacy as is the lie because they're lying and the children going up the d it's the dishonor and the inglorious way the the notion of god that's why luther said to erasmus your thoughts of god are too human i hope that helps i hope that means that you can have something in your mind to engage people rather than being intimidated into silence. We live in an amoral world because they're lying. What's it got to do with me? What is what are two human two two gay men and two gay what's that got to do with me? What's that got to do with you? Because we live in an amoral world, that's where the question comes from. Because they are lying. Because they're going after the children and because they dishonor God.